Hey everyone, what's in the news this week? Well, tennis player Emma Raducanu won the US Open, showing that unlike Prince Andrew, she's not scared of an American court. Actually, talking about Prince Andrew, he's got a shooting weekend scheduled two days before his first court hearing in the US. Just be careful, Andy. Accidents will happen after all when there's guns involved. However, the larger story at the US this week was an order from the White House that all federal employees have to be vaccinated. They've got about two months in which to do so, but this raises a couple of very important questions, the largest of which is what happens to the country if people decline the offer and the federal government ends up having to get rid of hundreds of thousands or potentially millions of workers? I say workers, although many of them don't really do a lot of work. I'm not sure how many of you have recently reapplied for a passport. But anyway, it turns out in the fine print that the rules don't actually apply to members of Congress or their staff. But that's to be expected, I suppose. Even normal rules don't apply to people like that. What's that? Everything that goes up must come down? Take a look at the national debt, why don't you? But to the point raised, what happens if out of the 2 million or so members of the US Armed Forces, around half of which aren't vaccinated, the military is suddenly forced to discharge half a million people? If you think that the withdrawal from Afghanistan was a confused shambles, it'll be interesting to see what happens when the army is forced to remove troops from the border with North Korea. Honestly, I really think this is a much bigger story than anyone's really realised. Air traffic controllers are all federal employees and it wouldn't really take many of those walking off the job to completely shut down air travel across North America, including cargo aircraft, the ones that kept flying all through 2020, delivering things to the shops. Or maybe I'm all wrong and these people will suddenly choose to change their mind on the vaccine and all these stories that you read about federal workers thinking of changing jobs anyway will all go away. They might all disappear, just like the clips from last year where both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were captured on film saying that they wouldn't take a vaccine simply because Donald Trump was endorsing it. You know, that's a problem when you take an issue like this and make it part of a culture war. The same state of affairs is very true in France right now, where Emmanuel Macron has made the AstraZeneca vaccine a political discussion, thus splitting the country down the middle and reframing the vaccine debate as being about as much about COVID as it is about unemployment and immigration. Talking about France, by the way, does anyone else think that Chewbacca in Star Wars is French? He always seems to understand English perfectly well, he just refuses to speak it. Anyway, back to the UK. Sajid Javid this weekend said that the government opposed the vaccine passport system. I suspect that the government quite astutely knows that the rollout and participation in such a system would be seen by many as a tacit acceptance of all of Tory policy, and that Boris Johnson would rather keep the tribalism over Brexit or social care as far away from the public health discussion as possible. Or maybe he's just waiting to roll it out on the sly when the US is forced to remove all its remaining soldiers from Eastern Europe. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.